Good morning. My name is Katherine Lyons, and I'm a Master of Public Policy student at Georgetown University. Hi, my name is Christian Conroy, and I'm also a Master of Public Policy student at Georgetown University. Hi, I'm Kelsey Berkowitz, and I'm also a Master of Public Policy student at Georgetown, and we are leveraging libraries. Washington, D.C. is a city of contrasts, a city where your life is very different depending on where you live. The city is split into eight wards, with wards seven and eight east of the Anacostia River, experiencing a poverty rate that is three times higher than the rest of D.C. The unemployment rates in Ward 7 and 8 are more than double the citywide rate. Now, I want to tell you about Denise. Denise is a single mother living in Ward 7. She has four children, and she wants a better job to be able to provide for them. As D.C.'s economy has grown, new job opportunities have emerged. But those jobs aren't for Denise because they require more advanced education than she has. Denise doesn't have a high school diploma because she dropped out when she was 14. Her reading and math skills are at an eighth grade level. There are 48,000 adults in DC who, like Denise, don't have a high school diploma, and a third of them live in Ward 7 and 8. A crucial stumbling block for many low-income residents in the city is a lack of basic literacy, numeracy, and digital literacy. Now, for Denise and the 48,000 adults like her, job training or post-secondary education could provide the skills needed to get those in-demand jobs. But job training and post-secondary programs remain out of reach for these residents because they require a high school diploma. This disparity in opportunity that's based on education has contributed to growing income inequality in the city. That's problem one. But our proposal is designed to address more than one challenge. Second challenge is that as technology has advanced, Libraries around the world are looking at ways they can adapt themselves to continue providing vital community services. Residents see libraries as familiar, safe places for community engagement. And in Ward 7 and 8, where home computer and internet access is lower than in other parts of the city, the library remains a crucial resource for many low-income residents and job seekers. Our proposal aims to tackle both of these issues by leveraging neighborhood libraries to address the challenges facing the thousands of adults in D.C., like Denise, who've been left behind by the traditional education system and have been locked out of the labor market. So what options does an individual like Denise have living in Ward 7? With over 4 million visits to D.C. public libraries in 2016 for the purpose of accessing free Wi-Fi, child learning programs, and meal services, Denise may very well end up at one of D.C.'s community libraries. Traditionally, D.C. public library staff that identify an individual as needing literacy support will direct him or her to the Adult Literacy Resource Center located at MLK Library in downtown D.C. For Denise to get to the center, she will first have to walk from the library to the nearest metro, which is about 10 minutes, where she will get on the orange line to go all the way across the river into the city, where she will switch again to the red line to get to downtown D.C. before getting out and walking again and ending up at the center seven miles later. Upon arriving at the center, she will take a skills assessment to gauge where her current level is. Now, if Denise scores at a level equivalent to an eighth grade learning level or below, she will be referred yet again to an external provider, such as the Washington Literacy Center, for example. So Denise now has to walk again and get back on the metro, go several more stops before getting out and walking again, all to be subjected to yet another skills assessment using a completely different testing instrument. All along this cumbersome journey, there's no integration with local job centers, and there's no one there to guide Denise along an education pathway with a clear and tangible employment goal at the other end. As Denise is referred from place to place, it becomes very easy for her to get lost in the system and become disillusioned. Each referral is yet another opportunity for Denise to give up and lose hope. And to make matters worse, The MLK Library recently closed for a three-year period of renovations, with limited services moving to a location even farther from the residents of Ward 7 who so desperately need basic adult education. Because of this, our proposal is to pilot a family learning center at Dorothy Height Library located in D.C.'s Ward 7. This program would provide basic adult education to those D.C. residents lacking basic skills and a high school diploma, while simultaneously providing child learning programs to their children, all right there within the library. 
So after an initial skills assessment is taken, if an individual like Denise scores at a level equivalent to an eighth grade level or below, rather than being referred to an external provider, she will meet with a case manager who will work with Denise to develop a personalized learning program and enroll her in weekend and evening classes. So while Denise is engaged in classes taught by internal adult learning librarians, trained by potential partners at places like the Washington Literacy Center, her children can be in the room directly next door, getting help on their homework or tutoring, or engaging in child learning opportunities, all with the help from a children's librarian or a certified volunteer. This way, as Denise becomes more educated, she will feel more confident playing an active role in the education of her own child. As part of this pilot, we seek to partner with the DC Department of Employment Services to ensure that what is being taught in these classes is integrated with real career content. And upon completion of this program, we will facilitate a warm handoff between the library and the DC Department of Employment Services American Job Center so that these individuals can move on to further education opportunities as well as job seeking and job training programs. That is the Family Learning Center. We have identified Dorothy Height Library in DC's Ward 7 as the most appropriate pilot location for the Family Learning Center. In addition to receiving close to 200,000 visits to the library in 2016, Dorothy Height Library is also just a five minute walk from the nearest American Job Center, making that location crucial to our being able to facilitate the handoff between the library and further education and job training and job seeking opportunities. In addition to the closure of the MLK Library, another local library in Ward 7 has also recently closed for a period of renovations, making the Dorothy Height Library that much more crucial to the Ward 7 community. Because of these circumstances, the DC Public Library has agreed to our pilot as part of their strategic plan's commitment to bringing further adult literacy resources to Ward 7. Based on our consultations with leadership, the DC Public Library has agreed to reallocate existing resources to our pilot as part of that strategic plan's commitment to bringing further adult literacy resources to Ward 7. This commitment to our pilot is the result of over 30 meetings and several more informal discussions with government officials, as well as adult workforce and education experts at local universities, as well as with company program managers and local area NGOs active in this space. In addition to being able to take advantage of existing library budget for operational overhead, we will be able to use the reallocated resources to cover hiring of a case manager and an adult learning librarian, as well as covering the background checks that will be needed for the volunteers taking part in the child learning component of our program. Additionally, we have identified several further private and public foundations that also offer funding also offer funding that we would be competitive for via our partnership with the MLK Library and the DC Public Library system. While we have seen some programs that seek to use this approach, there's no program that quite utilizes adult education and family learning in the way that our program will. But there is precedent. Most significantly, the National Center for Families Learning and Toyota are working with 15 community libraries across the nation to bring parents and children together for technology and literacy training and education. Independent results of that program have shown that 34% of parents reported gaining better jobs as a result of the program, and 96% reported even becoming a better teacher to their child. Now, while not all outcomes of this program will be quantifiable and measurable, because this will be a pilot, we will seek to evaluate key metrics to ensure that we can scale this pilot up in the right way in the future. Specifically, while the pilot will begin with an initial class of 15 residents, we will use that small sample size in order to inform the design of the program moving forward. We already have the commitment of the DC Public Library. We have the commitment of the DC Department of Employment Services. We've identified a pilot site staffed by librarians who have told us how excited they are about this program. The next step is to begin implementing and to make this pilot a reality. The Family Learning Center, located in a familiar library, would provide Denise with an accessible place in her community where she could go to pursue adult education while her children get help with their educations just next door. 
she would be better positioned to pursue the in-demand, good-paying jobs that were previously out of reach for her. Dorothy Height, who our proposed pilot library is named after, was a civil rights and women's rights activist. And this quote belongs to her. Thank you, and we're happy to take any questions.